Hello, my name is Philip Bloom and I'm a DP and director who's been at this for well over 20 years. I'm based in London and I'm in fact in London to talk about something very Australian, Miller tripods. You can tell I'm in London because it's the middle of the summer, it's about to rain, it's freezing cold, the River Thames is here and I'm wearing a cord jacket with a nice elbow patch. Can't get more British than that, right? I'm here today to do an overview of the Compass series of tripods from Miller. I've been using Miller tripods for well over five years now and they've travelled with me all over the globe on all sorts of different jobs. Just by looking at the website you can see there's a huge variety of different systems that you can get from Miller. I'm just going to focus on the Compass 12, the 15, the 20 and the 25. As the rain comes down in summery England, let's talk about the differences between the head and the sticks that you can get in the Compass range. Being the pathetic pom that I am, I'm cowering from this summer rain under this rather large oak tree. This camera is weather sealed. The tripod, of course, is weatherproof. I'm not. I'm always getting asked which camera should I buy. My answer is often, do you have the fundamentals? Do you have a decent lighting kit, some sound kit, and most importantly, do you have a decent set of sticks? Tripods are really important investments. A couple of years ago, I was shooting with a friend of mine on a DSLR, and he'd never shot with a proper fluid head tripod before, just been using the cheap ones. And the moment he put his hands on the Miller and used the head for the first time and went, wow, you can do smooth moves, he was completely sold. A proper tripod like this may cost you more than a cheap one, but it will last you a hell of a lot longer and the results you get from it will make a huge difference. So let's get the dullest stuff out there first, the actual facts and figures which differentiate the different heads so you know what the payloads are for each one. The payload for the Compass 12 is between 2 and 10 kilograms. It has three positions of drag on the pan and tilt. One of the things I like about the drag system on the Miller is when you do put it to zero, it is completely frictionless. Very nice. The payload on the Compass 15 is also 2 to 10 kilograms, but has five positions of drag on the pan and tilt. The payload for the Compass 20 is 2 to 12 kilograms, so it's higher than the previous two and also has five positions of drag control on the pan and tilt. The Compass 25 is a 100mm bowl tripod head as opposed to the previous ones, which are all 75. Its payload is 4 to 14 kilograms and it has five positions on the drag control. So what do those payloads mean in practice? Well, cameras are actually pretty damn light on their own. For example, this is the 5D Mark III. Without a battery, without a lens, without anything, it's just under one kilogram. By the time you've loaded up with a lens, battery, card, follow focus rig, you're well over the minimum two kilogram payload. So what if your camera is below that two kilogram minimum payload? Well, it'll still work just fine. You just won't be able to balance it as perfectly as you can if it goes over that two kilograms. But to be honest with you, pretty much most cameras out there will be above that once you start adding stuff on there. You're highly unlikely to shoot, for example, without a lens. This is well worth getting. It's the optional mounting bracket for the Compass series of heads. This gives you a 3.8 and a quarter 20 screw. And you can put things like a no arm on here, screw it in and attach a monitor and all sorts of other accessories away from the actual camera rig. And if you've never used a tripod with a bowl before, you are in for a huge shock it's so easy to get your tripod level. You simply undo the knob here, level it off, and then lock it down. Simple as that. So these legs are the solo legs. They come in different flavors. They come in two stage, which are these ones, three stage, carbon fiber and alloy. I like the carbon fiber best. The two stage and the three stage have the different pros and cons. But both of them, when you take the head off, goes in your suitcase real easily, wrap it up with a bit of clothes, no need for a separate tripod bag. The really cool thing about the solo legs is they go really low and really high. What you need to do is release this, bring them open, and here we go. It's like a hi-hat. We're 40 centimeters off the ground. Very, very versatile. The three stage goes ever so slightly lower at 39 centimeters. That's fine for filming hobbits and filming normal sized people. Well, it goes pretty damn high too. This is 180 centimeters off the ground. That's a two stage. But if you get the three stage, that's 204 centimeters off the ground. So it's 
really quite a big difference. The downside is the three stage is slightly more fiddly to put up. With the two stage, you've got six locks to turn. On the three stage, you've got nine. So it takes a little bit longer, but personally, for an extra 24 centimeters of height, I would rather go with the three stage. And with the solo sticks, of course, you have some nice spikes for uneven ground or carpet. And put it back onto the rubber for those delicate floors. These are the more traditional style of legs that you can get with the Compass system. They're alloy and they're two stage. I prefer the solo style, the carbon fiber ones, but if you go for these, just remember it's gonna be slightly heavier and it won't go as low or as high. The lowest is 56 centimeters and the highest is 173 centimeters. Compare that to the three stage solo, 204. So it is a big difference. There's another type of sticks that you can get with the Compass series, and that's the Sprinter 2. So what I like about this is the ease of use. It doesn't go as high as either of these two. 60 is its lowest, 169 at its highest, but it's so easy to put up and down. The problem with putting these up and down is you have to pick them up or bend down and do that. A little bit awkward. Same with these. But with the Sprinter 2s, we can drop our bottom legs from here rather than have to bend down to do it. And if you want to make it go even higher, it's just here. So it's very simple to adjust the height of our tripod. And that's what's key to the features of this type of legs rather than the other style. The other style, if you want to change the height, you generally pick up the camera and move the legs that way. This is designed for heavier cameras where it's going to be much harder to pick up the camera to raise. So this is perfect if you're someone like me with a screwed up back. The ability to change the level really easily is a huge advantage. The downside is you don't have that height flexibility. So that's an overview of the Compass series from Miller. Different tripods for different uses and different budgets. All of them are great. Just find the one that suits you the best. This is a key investment. It should see you through multiple cameras. And if it look after it well, you should be able to pass it through to your children and your grandchildren. The only thing I wish Miller could do is give us a little bit of that Aussie sunshine to go with it. Bloody miserable there. Eh?